What's up everyone, Alex here. It's been a good bit of time since both the Zero Escape and Danganronpa series ended, and since then, both of its creators formed a studio together to work on their next adventure. This collaboration has resulted in World's End Club, an adventure game that's actually got more in common with their previous games than you might think. But seeing how World's End Club looks and feels like such a huge departure thematically, fans are then left wondering, what will we find at World's End? This review was made possible by viewers like you, so please leave a like, comment, then subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video. World's End Club is a branching, story-driven side-scroller that features light action, platforming, and stealth gameplay, developed by Tokyo Games and Groundling, and published by NIS America, who provided this Switch review code. This is the full, complete version of the same game, released in early access on Apple Arcade the year prior. In World's End Club, you play the role of Racho, the silent member of the Go-Getters Club. It's the year 1995. While on a field trip to Kamakura, the Go-Getters Club bear witness to the destruction of Tokyo, resulting in a powerful shockwave that renders everyone unconscious. Upon waking up, you discover that you've wound up at an abandoned underwater amusement park, forced to play a game of fate that's been thrust upon you and your friends. And yet this is just the beginning, as this new adventure will test your loyalties with each member of the Go-Getters Club, while trying to uncover the mysteries of what really happened to the world at large. As hinted, World's End Club doesn't revolve around playing a killing game at an abandoned underwater amusement park. In fact, World's End Club will take you all across Japan, all the while piecing together clues and searching for remnants of civilization in order to make sense of what's happened. Frankly, deciding whether or not to reveal this information was one of the biggest things I've struggled with while writing this review. Given the pedigree of its creators, it's easy for their longtime fans to go into World's End Club with any preconceived ideas of what the tone and subject matter would be like. However, I find it necessary to dispel any notions that World's End Club would feature the violent thematics from their previous games, as the game really isn't about that at all. In the interest of getting everyone on the same page, we'll need to take a quick detour to talk about World's End Club's creators. World's End Club is written and directed by Kotaro Uchikoshi, with Kazutaka Kodaka serving as its creative director. Uchikoshi is best known for the Zero Escape series, games wherein a group of unsuspecting victims is forced to play games and puzzles in life or death situations. Similarly, Kodaka's Danganronpa series pits students against each other in a killing game, where they are also forced into a deliberation process to find a killer in question. While similar thematically, Uchikoshi Zero Escape features gameplay that's not so dissimilar to point-and-click adventure games, puzzles included, while Kodaka's Danganronpa blends courtroom battles with action gameplay. What makes these games interesting, however, are the moments in between gameplay, where its narrative spends some time establishing the overarching story as well as developing the remaining characters in question. Additionally, Uchikoshi's Zero Escape is popular for telling a non-linear narrative that features multiple branching paths. It's because of these elements that World's End Club can be considered a variation on these design concepts, substituting both Zero Escape's puzzles and Danganronpa's courtroom action for side-scrolling gameplay, and incorporating Uchikoshi's non-linear storytelling into the heart of the game's overarching story. Unlike the mentioned games, however, World's End Club's gameplay can prove very frustrating due to the absence of tight controls. Jumps feel a little floaty and therefore unwieldy, and any attempts to react quickly to whatever the game throws at you will often be rewarded by either unresponsive movements or being hit with collision boxes that are larger than what they seem. To make matters worse, you have no health bar to speak of, and any damage you incur or any pit you fail to clear will have you seeing the game over screen right away, sending you to the last checkpoint. There are also no indications that you've crossed a checkpoint anywhere in the game, though it always seems as though there's a checkpoint close to where you perish. This is all to say that despite my struggles with its controls, these side-scrolling sections were still very easy to complete on a normal difficulty, with the only challenge you'll be facing will be that of your own impatience or any unfortunate happenings brought about by its gameplay design. This is a bit regrettable, given that these side-scrolling sections let you play with a different go-getter, each with their own unique gimmicks. There's also the fact that gameplay sections contain numerous cutscenes that interrupt your flow, preventing you from getting used to your character's gimmicks after only advancing a few steps. 
These cutscenes can only be skipped by either mashing through the dialogue or using the skip event function after reaching your first ending, and many of these scenes merely provide extraneous information that any long-time gamer would quickly identify. It's in this sense that the truth behind World's End Club's gameplay design is revealed, that it is aimed towards a segment of the population that may not have had experience with games before, with the goal of enticing these folks to check it out. Unfortunately, this provides a jarring experience for players who are fairly experienced with the conventions of the genre, ultimately causing frustration as a result. While the story certainly doesn't reach the same level of abstraction or obfuscation as either Zero Escape or Danganronpa, I did have an easier time taking in the story of World's End Club, which felt a bit refreshing. Unfortunately, this also made the game's story a bit more predictable, with some reveals not feeling big enough at times. Despite that, I can easily say that I was fairly entertained by World's End Club's narrative. Apart from what's going on in the world around them, much of your time will be spent getting to know who the go-getters are and how the club came into being. While I'll admit that its character designs didn't appeal to me when I saw them years back, I've come to really appreciate how easy this helped me identify each go-getter. This is partially due to how Uchikoshi based each of the go-getters' designs on the 12 signs of the Chinese zodiac, explaining in an interview that, In Japanese onomatopoeia, rats go chu chu. That's why the character based on the rat is called Chuko. Likewise, cows go Mo, Mo in Japanese, and that's where Mochan gets his name from. Outside of their presentation, I do wish that the game could have spent more time developing some of the other characters in the story. As with a cast this large, it's often challenging for writers to know where to draw the line when it comes to how much a character needs to be talked about. But given that part of the journey is about which characters you like at face value and siding with them, it would have been great to allow us to get to know the rest of the cast at a much deeper level. Your affinity towards each character will be put to the test when selecting which particular group of go-getters you'd like to journey alongside during choice events in the story. It's in these moments that the story splits, though it never gets so complicated that it's difficult to keep track of. Upon finishing the game, all of the previously played story and action sequences will be unlocked to allow you to experience what you might have missed. Though, if you've never played an Uchikoshi game before, you might want to know that the answer to this is always, you have to, given that there's always a true ending that you'll unlock after experiencing everything. While there is an option to toggle between Japanese and English voice acting, I was curious to see how good the English voice acting was. Alas, it's a bit of a mixed bag for my taste. There've been moments in the game where the performances really brought out a lot of emotion, breathing life into its characters that transcend their presentation. But there also have been moments that land with a thud, partially due to how some of the jokes don't land in English or how the story's being told. There's also the question of some of the characters' voice direction, with Pi's performance being noteworthy, as her often slow speech pattern accidentally paints her as slow-witted, despite the game and its official website not describing her as such. No! I'm dead! Perhaps the biggest surprise of World's End Club is its soundtrack. Composed by Jun Fukuda, the game's tracklist is a pastiche of musical cues from the creator's previous games, while at the same time also delivering an audio landscape that's completely unexpected. Fukuda's soundtrack completes every scene, and I won't deny that his songs have made the game's action sections a ton more bearable as a result. That's powerful music right there, and I'm looking forward to hearing more of Fukuda's works in the future. Looking at the entire game, World's End Club feels like a collective desire of its creators to break away from the shackles of the games they're known for. The result is a game that feels like a way to explore the ideas of evoking a sense of childlike wonder while still trying to maintain elements of mystery from their previous work. In a way, I can certainly see this perspective, especially after working on two popular series for the better part of a decade. It's just unfortunate that the gameplay that ties its story sections together doesn't feel as fulfilling or fun to engage in. But despite these frustrations, I can still say that I enjoyed my time with the Go-Getters Club, and any longtime fan of Uchikoshi and Kodaka, or anyone who's looking for a lighter narrative to experience, should check out World's End Club when you have the chance.